Hey, what's up guys? It's Oakley and we are going to be playing a siege here, Siege of Ravenna. It's a kind of a port assault. And the interesting thing that you'll be noticing if you look closely at the cityscape itself is these are going to be Warhammer buildings. And that is because I am playing on the mod uh, Medieval 1212 or Medieval Kingdoms 1212 AD, which is the mod that turns the world of Attila into a medieval setting. So obviously fast forwarding. Uh, a little bit the time frame and you get a lot of cool units tons of different factions it's a really huge overhaul mod that I've been covering or at least done a couple videos on in the past and they just recently came out with an update that introduces the new buildings as we've seen uh, so far it scavenging the Warhammer buildings and then them implementing some custom walls uh, and whatnot so what do we have facing off against us well there's four ships uh, two crossbow marines and then uh, two of the um, catapult crew and so they'll be circling around behind our force and now we can start to take a look at some of the uh, nifty units tons of unique units used for all the different armies the plate armor uh, the pavisir crosswoman that a lot of the different forces have also look marvelous take a look at this captain looking freaking sweet um, so there's going to be four armies versus three, uh, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, one of our players had crashed out and was having issues rejoining, but hopefully the defenses of the city will kind of counteract that. Pevisir is here, medium spur infantry, and look at the heraldry, the coloration on these guys. God, it's freaking cool. Footmen at arms backing these up. And then some cheaper peasants. Uh, another thing you'll be seeing the attackers having is artillery. They didn't bring any siege equipment for this fight. They're going to be focusing entirely on artillery. So again, another inv advantage for us. So the force here that we're taking a look at um, is, I believe, the uh, forces of Norway. And so they have some of these heavy melee infantry, some axes, long swords, um, and this unit called the Guests, I'm not sure if that's a placeholder name, but they're essentially some high tier uh, bow infantry, completely covered in mail it seems like. And they do have some cannon crew. Uh, some of the things you'll be seeing in this battle is uh, these early mortars that are going to have some cool effects to them. They shoot up obviously like mortars with projectiles and they explode in the air and rain down hell on your troops. So cool that they got that into Attila. And then there's another unit here. Uh, heavy melee infantry with the general also pushing forward. Uh, once again, keep an eye out on all the awesome armor and some of the kings here. Uh, when you do bring your kings, and you do have a, a big amount of choice between kings, lords, kind of princes and whatnot, you will often get characters with crowns on their heads, either on foot as seen here, or otherwise you'll see them uh, riding horseback. Heavy shot cavalry on this flank as well, looking beautiful. And then two armies out on this front. We'll go back in and cover the defensive strategy here soon. I just want to give you kind of the look around uh, at all the different forces. These macemen. God, so good. And then here is uh, a Grand Bombard. Not as grand as the one that you remember from uh, Medieval 2. But this guy is still a real force to be reckoned with. I believe he can take out walls in just a shot or two. Long reload rate, um, but still very, very powerful. So that's going to be coming to bear against us. Uh, you can see the enemy has already taken out one of these towers. The rest of the forces in the back, more Pevice Crosswomen, more of these high-tier knights. And again, we'll come in close and try and look for uh, the king, the bassinet helmets. Uh, meant to deflect arrows being worn. Awesome. And then finally, let's see the last force on this front. Tons of Italian polearm mercenary infantry. Lots of armor on the head. Uh, not so much invested in the torso and the legs. This guy's doing fairly well for himself. And then the rear ranks with more axemen. So these guys are built as kind of shock units. Oh, melee infantry, actually. So yeah, these somehow these are classed as swords, although it doesn't quite look like it. But anyways, these guys are pretty scary in the sense that they probably have a lot of charge attack to their name. And then heavy archers in the back. 
uh, just kind of scattered out and a huge cluster again of cavalry on the flank here they kind of look like Klibinari but yeah that's all there facing off against us and then you start to see the uh, artillery firing away at our um, some of our towers so the defense is I am obviously the player here highlighted in yellow uh, what am I starting to do well I have a mix of troops I have I think three or four of these heavy melee infantry and they're gonna move up into position kind of spaced out around the city I'm moving in with some Muslim archers these are my cheapest of my archers low armor penetration but they have pretty good range and high reload rate so they're just there to kind of harass and ding at the enemy and man they look so freaking cool I wonder if this is scavenged from Charlemagne yeah they look beautiful so they're gonna get ready to climb up on the walls the city is actually gonna start to catch fire with some of the projectiles coming in but my defense as always is gonna be staggered looks like the gate was just blown open by a projectile so I mean it's gonna be time for assault soon Another one of the Spadakini uh, swordsmen on that right flank. And then what I have is um, some crosswomen waiting in the back. And then I have some gunners. Almogavar hand gunners, which are very strong. Lots of armor penetration. And then I have some elite cavalry behind these. Heavy shock cav. And then more reserves pulling in. I have more sporadic French nobles, other uh, elite forces kind of hit in the back, more Balasari. I do have some pikemen. Only one of them. Didn't want to bring too many to a siege because that can be kind of uh, cheap. But they're going to be meant to hold some of the, uh, the key cross points. And then I have more reserves in the back. Uh, two kind of lance sergeants. And on top of that, I also have a force of scattered foot uh condottieri which are pole arm infantry heavy guys good on the charge and man look at the weapons they have huge lever arms on these guys with a very small point that is meant for armor penetration so that's kind of my force like i said it's kind of scattered all over the place and i did bring a pretty heavy contingent of cavalry that i'll be using to sally forth and i'm trying to hide some cavalry here as the enemy starts to creep up with two of the mortars they want to shell this entire position so I'm getting ready to do something about that but they're knocking out all of our towers take a look at this defense nothing left in the way of towers and soon the walls are gonna fall prey as well on this front the enemy has blown a hole in the wall and is now you know targeting our towers and they have some um, gold 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 uh, units pushing up looks like we lost some of our guys on the wall I'd see one of those projectiles that comes in. I think this is going to be it for the tower. Nope, that was the mortar, but see how it does damage on the ground? Oh no, and it did take out the tower. Yeah, and there's the additional mortar strikes. So the enemy is pushing in with a lot of archers. We're going to try and counter charge that. Try and sally out, but the enemy is suppressing us. And they're moving around the back. Meanwhile, I'm going to do my very bold charge. Just as the enemy axemen and whatnot were pushing forward, I spot an opportunity to bring... My cavalry out from the city, just in the face of the enemy, right in front of my uh, destroyed towers. I'm going to send men up on the walls because I know the enemy is going to be super mad at what I'm doing. And what I am doing is charging out here into the open in the face of the army. I'm going to run down these catapult and, or not catapult, sorry, I should say mortar crews. And just deal so much damage to them and continue to plow through. The entire army is there, kind of dumbfounded at the charge across the swamp that I was able to do. We're getting lots of kills here. The entire army now is going to swarm upon me. Cavalry in tow. So I can kind of outrun the footmen. But it's these cavalry behind me that are going to be very worrisome. I had already planned on this happening. So most of my cavalrymen have been able to extradite themselves. And amidst all the fire and wreckage up on the walls, I am actually slowly starting to bring up some archers and other units. So let's press insert here. Yep, took no losses and I killed 32 men, so look at that. Archers on the walls. Going to start sniping at these knights on the flank. I'm going to pull back to the wall. I'm getting some more archers up here as well. Just in a nice position, and then my knights form up. 
daring the enemy to charge us. So that's a really cool position. And now we're going to start to heavy shot the enemy from both flanks. And now they're going to start to lose riders here and there. The rest of the army is trying to close, mostly archers, but they're not quite sure they want to engage in this total death trap. Let's watch from the position of my knights, just because I thought this was such an epic move. And he is going to get the drop on me as I'm trying to micro elsewhere. Um, but my knights are heavier than his, I believe, and with the supporting fire, I'm mean, doing a lot of damage. Let's see how I came out uh, from that engagement. So I lost three men off the charge, uh, and he has is down to 36, so he's lost two. Heavy shot cab, so he's way outnumbered by my guys. I should win this, especially, as I said, with the supporting fire. Meanwhile, over here, he's charged forward, broken a huge um, hole in the wall. Now these heavy assault infantry are going to charge in. I do a smart thing, and what I do is I peel off. I don't want to block the gap. And what I do is I'm going to do what I always do, is play with angles. So one of my swordsman units is just going to hold the position here. And then my crossbowmen and other gunners in the back are going to take the opportunity to shoot at the enemy's flank. So they were targeting this here. I get another force to clobber and hold back the enemy. And then take a look at what I've got with my cavalry, I wait for another volley of my archers to get off, and then boom, I'm gonna charge oh, right into the back of this force of Italian mercenaries. And usually it takes a lot for units to rout, but here, this tier three silver, silver, shoved up Italian mercenary unit goes the way of the dodo. And I destroy them, 46 kills on the charge with zero losses on my guys. That is how we're gonna win this battle, but being cost efficient. Meanwhile, over here, he tried to pull forward with archers and other units. And now I'm positioning some cavalry and especially gunners to ward these guys off. And now with this victory, my cav pulls through, again with no losses. And then I leave my infantry to deal with this threat. And again, archers supporting in the background. Artillery is going to try and do some damage, but I'm holding out very, very well. Put this on slow motion for a moment so we can turn back our attention to this uh, engagement. I've switched to heavy shot just because I really need to punch through these enemy units. Heavy shot cav, very tired. Lost 18 men. Meanwhile, I've, I'm losing a fair amount. I'm tier 2, here's tier 3. So he's actually uh, like a super heavy shock. And he should be able to deal with me. His reinforcements are pushing in. Mostly archers and pevice crossbowmen. Gonna be targeting my archers up here. But again, they're just kind of a distraction. So I'm not super worried about that. And he is kind of moving in with most of his armed forces so that's going to be scary once he does punch a hole in the wall two of his artillery did come back great bombard and a mortar i killed the other mortar so that was pretty beneficial meanwhile on this front the enemy is breaking through you can push play they were able to just capture and destroy this gatehouse and now a unit of looks like french nobles they're going to charge forward at the background burning this is so freaking cool in the wedge formation gonna be staging inside our land so two of these men at arms the artillery support exploding in and amongst our ranks god we've got ourselves in a very precarious position here what do we have tons of late infantry crossbowmen and other units so we're not holding the choke points which is unfortunate and our um, heavy melee infantry gets taken out by a huge uh, swath of archers. Meanwhile, the enemy is charging forward, and kind of funnily enough, we have an isolated unit of crossbowmen that's gotten itself stuck on the side, and I love this guy's mustache. Oh, no, never mind, that's a piece of armor. But yeah, they've gotten themselves stuck here, where they can shoot at the enemy, but they're soon going to get surrounded. So this side of the battle, not going quite as planned, we've kind of fallen back. Over here, we are holding strong with some infantry, and we do have our own mortars and whatnot in the back. Bombards, I should just say. Trying to support our position, but the firing arc is not great. So we're getting overwhelmed. Some of the enemy is pulling through on this position. And they've been able to locate some of my spearmen that were hugging the wall, hiding from artillery. Hit them in the flank, and so I'm going to lose 15 or so men. But then now I've turned about with Spear Infantry and against Cavalry, this is going to start to go my way. And especially with the reinforcements I have nearby, foot troops and more um, units were going to be able to stop that French Cav, which is great. I beat the enemy Cav on the outside, well, somewhat, 
Reinforcements came in from the general to try and deal with me. It managed to be a success, but my bowmen did a lot of damage. Meanwhile, over here, I've cleaned up these forces and take a look at these Muslim archers coming back in with um, heavy shot and just shredding these units. Meanwhile, I did sally out on this front with a group of gunners and a group of cavalry. My cavalry came out here to see off the archers. I took off a big chunk of them, but then got countercharged by enemy units. So I'm gonna end up losing that fight, but once again, it's gonna be time for a trade. And so what I've decided to bring in is gonna be the gunners, and they have the best target here. Cavalry, which are big targets, lots of armor that would otherwise be almost impossible to kill. So this is the best position that I wanna be in. Starting to get a lot of kills. The general was threatening to charge into me, but then I uh, kind of had some supporting infantry formed up in a shield wall. Again, we'll go ahead and try and appreciate the visuals of this. Great to see a shield wall with plate armed troops. And then knowing that, yeah, this is not going to go all with so many infantry coming in, I decide to pull out of this position and fall back once more. My opponent does try and intercept with some Italian mercenaries. We'll see how that goes. And what he's decided to do is pour all of his cavalry into this fight. I'm not going to charge out with medium spear infantry. Who seem to be running almost in slow motion here. But joining the fight here to try and save my cavalry. Cavalry fights and other engagements like this you'll notice do last a long time. Um, if you disengage it'll route almost instantly. So it's better to just leave this, them in. And I'm feeding units in slowly but surely. Spearmen against cav is going to be great. And the whole while I've had supporting archers. But now I'm going to have two armies pouring into my front ranks. I'm able to sandwich this little Italian mercenary force, which is awesome for me. It overextended itself. And then now the enemy is going to pour in. I've got swordsmen in good condition, going to hold the gates. And I'm starting to pull in with cav reinforcements and other units. Again, another gun, uh, gunner force. Uh, turn them about, reloaded, and now we're going to try and get some fire off at the enemy. Um, once more, I've presented a flank for my men to shoot into, and it's going to be doing wonders for me, helping to cleave these guys into little pieces. On the outside, the enemy cav is trying to disengage, but taking a lot of damage in the process. I lose my unit, um, and now he's got swords against my spear, so I will lose that, uh, but we'll see how this goes. Lots of archers and supporting fire trying to help his guys out, but I think the advantage is mine. And then I sally out with some of my swordsmen just to try and join the fray and keep this unit pinned while I pull in cavalry. And my goal is to keep the enemy cav, keep everything kind of sucked in and pinned there, and then try and move in with my cav to strike at the rear of this uh, enemy infantry. After I've done a lot of damage from the front, from the sides with my gunners, and then boom, heavy hitters with the knights there. And that is going to see off another one of his elite units. Cav here with 30 kills already. And a lot of Cav going to take the bait and decide to charge into this fight. I'm going to realize, yeah, we need to disengage because if this gets in here, it's going to start to prove bloody. But I realize that I can't pull out in this time, so I stand still. And I'm going to take this uh, fight at the breach, which is awesome. Infantry getting in the mix too. This is going to be really, really chaotic. There's even artillery starting to shoot in from the enemy's flank, but we'll see how this goes. Two infantry against mostly cavalry. I think this is in my favor, although he does have some medium infantry. I have crossbows to support, and then again, gun line to shoot up into that blob as well. Uh, as I've got my guys kind of thrown in uh, the shredder there, I'm hustling over with some pikes. And this is the moment they were built, uh, you know, the moment they lived for, the moment they were born uh, to do. And that is going to be to hold the front as two armies worth of units try and charge through the center. So now we're going to move to plug the gap. The right hand side of the wall is completely clogged by my forces. Cavalry with punishing fire from my flank here. Totally exposed on this little bit of high ground. So it's an excellent just killing ground. Uh, for my forces. Enemy bows trying to shoot into the mix, but really not doing too much. So I'd say my side of the battle is super cost effective. 
And yep, starting to shatter the enemy troops. But at the same time, my guys are starting to break too with the fire penalties and all that overwhelming numbers. So I do bring in some, uh, my ally brings in more guys and I'm starting to shuffle in some more troops. They plunged, you know, another huge hole through here. Lots of macemen and other units breaking through. So this is devastating. I tried to get in a cavalry charge against the unit as it moved into position, but that many infantry, just not going to be able to kill them. My general here, tr here tried to charge in. He got a fair amount of kills, but took a beating himself. And now they're going to try and get around the flank. I have a lonely unit of spearmen. We're going to form up in shield wall, and we'll see how they take a charge like this. And as you may have seen if you've played this or other mods that try and slow down combat, well, you'll realize that, yeah, these spears are going to be able to hold this mass of men, which is great uh, for defenses. I've pulled around my general into the back, threatening to strike at the rear of this, so that's always a good move. Pikes have pulled back to a more defensible location, and then we're doing a staggered retreat. Meanwhile, over here, I've got gunners and crossbowmen. Going to be trying to target this force. And I'm going to have to um, kind of pull out of the position soon. I was trying to get another volley off. We'll see how that goes. But now I have uh, pole arms on the flank. And I'm able to just barely get out of dodge there. And then my ally, thankfully, has infantry uh, coming back soon. So I'm trying to engage with my opponent in positions that are going to be favorable to me. My king of Naples here decided to pull back. You saw how the enemy was going to corner me from both flanks. So I had to get out of there just in time. And then here I've been able to pull back and I've got my own cavalry ready to charge this infantry unit of macemen as it gets pulled into uh, this unit. So nice strike with my cavalry. Fairly short burst but still uh, going to do a lot of damage to the macemen. And then I decide to retarget on this other force and look at the opportunities I've created myself. Pull this guy out of position. Instead of taking the engagement at the choke point, I took an engagement where I would threaten or expose the enemy's rear. This is really critical for sieges. So I land a clean strike through the back of the enemy. 93 right now, and I guarantee this is going to drop to like 70. Oh my god, 50, 55, holy crap, and just about shattered. So that is the advantage of the positioning that I had. Now spears, look at this, The basically the whole army on this right flank is pushing through the center, some tapering off and attacking on the sides where we're going to counter charge, but most of it is going to be pushing through, and now they're going to face my spears uh, in the central uh, avenue, which is great, it's exactly what I wanted, and then I have gunners and crossbowmen uh, to support in the back, so I have done everything to get the opponent to do what I wanted to, strike in the back with my cavalry, sally back and hit these macemen in the rear, so let's see, 113 kills, and uh, five kills on my general, but that's soon going to get racked up. We destroy those macemen. I was going to land another strike on the rear of this maceman unit, but this guy moved back into position, which is fine. It means that I just have a fresh unit of pole arms uh, to reinforce. Now I'm faced with a strategic decision. Do I help reinforce this, or do I deal with these macemen? Well, my thinking was, looks like the pikes are going to hold. If these guys are going to stand still, I can charge it with cavalry, I can shoot it with gunners, or I can attack it in the rear. So my idea is, rather than committing my infantry to that spear wall, which is holding out just fine, let's go ahead and hit this unit in the back. And then let's get gunners poised just in front of them as they start to turn their flank uh, to bear to face me. And now I have a one-two punch stationed, ready to go. My cavalry are milling about. I'm uh, kind of killing the rest of the forces. Oh my god. That just flattened the ranks there. Awesome stuff. And that does some nice uh, morale penalties as well. I'm going to allow my enemy, or sorry, my ally to charge into the flank for this infantry. Meanwhile, my cavalry is going to pull off to the side. No sense getting caught up in this engagement. I know a better position where I can use them, and that's going to be to flank around the side. Over here, my ally is caught in desperate straits with my own cavalry, trying to bottleneck that up. If we lose that, it does threaten the rear of this pike formation, so that's a big problem for me. Let's put this on slow motion. So, the entire enemy force has pretty much uh, committed its infantry reserves. 
and now we just have to clean up these forces. Lots of archers and other units milling in the back, but the majority of the force has been committed inside the city. And I still have a couple reserves, my King of Naples, uh, for instance. Meanwhile, how is the fight going here? Well, the enemy is starting to land some of their ships around back after harassing us for a while. And they've penetrated pretty deeply with their forces. We've been able to put this on play. Hold fairly well with our mercenary pull arms and other units but against these mass crossbow units we're just not able to do very much these pavice guys they're just chipping away at our defenses and especially against uh, pole arm infantry which you can see here have no shields they're gonna get absolutely destroyed so our enemy doing a good job with mass bow fire we're gonna try and break through and deal with them in the back but it's just not gonna happen slowly finally breaking through and so we can try and commit to the back of this. We just don't really have enough forces to uh, to force the issue. On this front, I had sent some cavalry to help the enemy beat back the archers. Looked like it did work, and there was a bit of a massacre here in terms of the uh, commitment of infantry and cavalry amidst the burnt buildings. So good to see that <laughs> action has not been only you know present on my side. So we did fairly well. But now, gold chevron... Orkney Islanders with range and armor penetration can deal a lot. Artillery is also going to see us off. So now it looks like it's mostly going to be a retreat on this flank. Returning to my side, I still have some archers on the top. Finally chased off. One of my cavalry units did punch through. And now it's going to hit oh, this blob in the back. 158 kills so far. That's going to go a little bit further. But now the enemy finally... Just overwhelm my pikes. 42 kills to their name. Fairly well. Holding out. And they held out so long just in part due to the support of the Chevaliers. Uh, Chevalier, I should say, and other units on the right. But now it's going to be wholesale slaughter. Um, my support over here is shattered. Gunners that were positioned to support do get some final parting shots. But now they're going to be caught in two positions. My cavalry here, my nobles, with 174 kills, Silver Chevron does shatter another of the Macemen forces. We're doing really good, but the enemy is starting to kind of close me off. I don't really have anywhere left to go. I'm going to try and pull out behind um, my units as they sacrifice themselves. Meanwhile, this uh, infantry force should hopefully be able to pincer this guy, but they need to get out of there. My nobles, I'm desperately trying to click them through. But they keep getting caught. I want them to go after the enemy archers. And they do get away. So 180 kills for their name. And what I'm hoping to do is... Oh, look at all these juicy targets in the back. I'm hoping to go after them and get some nice kills. We'll see how that goes. Meanwhile, the retreat is total on my flank. I'm pulling back with archers, handgunners, and my general. So that's kind of all I have left. Excuse me. One artillery crew still in the back peppering us, but... As I said, yeah, all-out retreat. Nothing much to hold the enemy back on the right side as well. Helped by the, the uh, excuse me, the Bohemian. <laughs> getting a stuffed nose. Uh, helped by the Bohemian King on this flank. Generals seem to be super powerful in this. I mean, any heavy cav uh, seems to do really well, especially in the late game here. So it's going to be able to crack a lot of our blockades. We ourselves do still have some uh, premium elites, perfecti, heavy shock cav to deal with the enemy. But in dealing with infantry, you really need something to stop them, to hammer, uh, sorry, to anvil them, and then hammer them in the back with cab. You need something to stop them. And tragically, we don't have much in the way of infantry. Only one uh, mercenary men at arm unit left, and the rest, really not much. My own general here was pulled forward, the King of Naples, um, to try and help salvage the situation here, beat, beat back the archers. I did give him a movement order and then was looking elsewhere. So for, I think, uh, a, a little bit of time, he's actually going to be at the standstill here. While the enemy crossbowmen start to get some crucial strikes against me. I do charge in, but an artillery strike does more damage. And now I'm down, you know, seven men. And I charge, charge straight into the uh, enemy heavy bows, but they seem really, really good. Not quite sure why. And they're formed into wedge, so they have additional advantages. Uh, so they're going to hold out. Uh, much longer than I would have expected. I was hoping to just rampage through here with my general. And yeah, now I'm down 
to 24 men but i'm able to obliterate this first force two more in the back uh, and now i'm thinking to attack them the enemy definitely realizes the, the threat and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a feint towards the enemy that's going to trigger them to pull back they have more archer support so there's no way i'm falling for that trap and now with my general at 23 men left i realize yep i gotta pull out i'm gonna fall back to the keep on this flank we have a lot more crossbows another unit is trying to support from the top this engagement but we've been in a losing battle this whole time on this front um, we did eventually get our swordsmen around back to charge the enemy but enemy general the french king here did a lot to help uh, keep them alive he's got 144 kills so yeah he was uh, a large part of that action we're gonna be targeting the enemy general with our crossbows but the arc of fire is not gonna bode very well Although, as I say that, a couple of them are getting picked off, so we'll see how that goes. But yeah, once these infantry break, again, we have no we have no anvils to keep the enemy at bay. Now the enemy is storming through the center. My cavalry that I told you I was going to charge uh, bravely against the enemy force got kind of bogged down somehow. Um, these medium and high tier uh, archers and skirmishers seem to do really well. They have good staying power. And so they were able to see me off, especially in loose order, surprisingly. Um, just soaked up that charge like a boss and then kept shooting at me and just destroyed me. So that's not going too well. So as I said, the rest of the force is going to be pouring on through. A couple of the enemy generals did move, uh, especially the Bohemian King, move aggressively against one of our uh, milites. And I'm not quite in a position. Again, this is where choosing the right angles would have been important had our ally pulled back a little further and then engaged there I could have had my gunners around the flank shooting into them we get a charge from the flank so when you're at uh, a disadvantage like this numerically it's often best to seek a, um, a positioning advantage and then also bowmen shooting at our reinforcements we have a big or kind of a motley crew I should say there's hand gunners in here mixed with uh, medium melee infantry so we'll see how that goes we're gonna try and clear this out and it does draw off pressure from this flank if only momentarily this huge blob of macemen is the scariest thing uh, we don't have anything to counter it gunners up on the top rank are gonna try and do some damage and uh, we'll see how that ends up going not really expecting too much I have my own gunners that I've brought into the back uh, and they're getting a couple shots up over into this mass. We're not doing too much. And look at the mortars now pulled into the fight. Starting to hammer our guys. We'll see how this does. Let's get back to this side. The uh, Bohemian King down to 11 versus our 25. So we're exhausted but confident. And so I think we are going to win that fight. But here comes another Emperor's Bodyguard late to the battle. Um, fresh however so he's gonna be uh, a welcome addition to that force a lot of infantry here kind of milling about and they have their supporting uh, artillery guy once again circling around really cool to see the navies I'm not quite sure if this is a custom shit I know they were working on some I'm not sure if this is one of those but it looks glorious I'm not quite sure if it's gonna be able to dock uh, I know one had previously, it may just be trying to get some supporting fire. And the enemy is massing about with its archers, and they're going to start to target our bombard crew. Yikes, not looking good, although, oh, if we can kill, kill the enemy king, we may get a little bit of a, a morale domino effect. But it's going to cost us one of our late tier units. Ooh, and he does end up getting shattered. Time to get a Latin Emperor into the mix. That was pretty dope. Five men left plus some swordsmen. I think the fight is going to go in their way. And oh god, we have our own general caught in the mix. Count of Toulouse. He shatters. My ally starts to shatter and waver. 
or Waver and then Shatter, I suppose is the proper order. And then I have my own uh, Crossbowmen in the mix, plus Gunner is attempting to get around the flank. We're going to try and hold the choke. And I think I'm going to do a little bit of a stutter step uh, retreat, hoping to get maybe, I don't know, a little bit of more breathing room to get a shot off, but nope, my guys are routing. Back to the keep. Two of our units on this flank, Crossbowmen, did do a good job of actually warding off or seeing off the enemy but yeah yikes not much left I've lost all my forces our allies have lost all the forces king assassinating kings emperors fighting emperors here this is a huge concentration of nobility monarchy and power all fighting the mix and then you have arrows and bolts uh, thrown into it just for good measure Two of our archers decided to kind of try and spite the Emperor's bodyguard. And now they have drawn the uh, the ire of that bodyguard. Looks like he's going to turn about for a final charge. And this may be the final moments for our defenders. A couple of withering blows. Taking out some of the knights who are here going to kind of charge in at the trot. And it's not looking too scary. Until you notice that there is... oh. A fuck ton of mace men and other units coming in. And if that weren't enough, there's even going to be a whole bunch of archers and other units closing in the back. So, at the end of this, this was, like I said from the beginning, a uh, it was supposed to be a 4v4 and then one of our players dropped out having desyncs and issues with the mod. So we proceeded with the uh, 3 versus 2, thinking that the advantage of being in the city plus the enemy not having any siege equipment saved uh, cannons would even the odds and I think at the end it did kind of come out fairly evenly and I always like to fight a good battle I would say at the end of the engagement I did really well on my side and it was more fun than just kind of holding um, the edge of the map and kind of keeping them at the choke points and knowing you're gonna win I find these types of battles way more entertaining let's end the rate play and uh, kind of see what we're dealing with here in terms of kills you can see three versus uh, four but he bring a lot of guys uh, to the fight. Let's take a look at, um, I guess, my forces first. So I brought forces of Sicily. And um, General was 65. Cavalry doing a lot of work for me despite being in the city. Gunners doing great. Archers doing fairly well. And then, yeah, my swordsmen actually doing a lot of the work. Uh, these pole arms just didn't seem to pay for themselves. Pikemen doing fairly well, but I think for the most part, swords seem to be the way to go. Let's see, dank beam here. Yep, wearing almost exclusively swords, although his didn't do very well. Mostly getting shot to pieces, I believe, by crossbowmen. And then his own crossman doing fairly well. His cannon, holy crap, 608 kills. I should have definitely invested in one of these. I had tons of clusters of troops to take out, so that probably would have been a worthy investment. I mean, 608, that's absurd. That's like a third of a third of an enemy army. That's crazy. Uh, and then Johnny Cash here, 216 on the cannons. Yep, I definitely should have brought a cannon. Uh, 122 on the Latin Emperor, 157 on the Mercy Minute Arms. And yeah, again, a huge uh, preponderance of swords. On the other side, Slytacular here, a lot of swords. Again, shoved up to gold. Lots of swords, lots of kills. Cannons, again, doing a lot of work. And the enemy just didn't bring that much cav, surprisingly, which allowed me to do a lot of the sorties. A nice action. Tons of swords with a medium number of kills. These are the guys that I charged out and attacked, so that was a good move, knowing that, I mean, mortars are capable of getting 606. Yeah, taking those guys out early was a good move. Um, looks like the French here doing okay. Crossbin, most of their killing power. And a footman of arms, some of these guys doing well. And it looks like their halberdiers did well. And again, French King, generals all around doing fairly well. Uh, here, Luke George the first. And where do you get most of his kills? These guys, heavy assault troops. And uh, yeah, I mostly fought against uh, the Empire of Nicaea and did, did really well against them. So, hope you guys did enjoy this battle. There will be more to come. Stay tuned for, for those future battles. See you in the next one. Peace out.